Okay, we're putting in another central boiler wood boiler. Here we're installing our Thermopex. Expensive stuff, but boy is it awesome. It's so well insulated, isolated, inch and a quarter PEX lines. And the, the only bummer is we're tearing up propane lines and we already cut through their sprinkler system. We missed the septic, thankfully. But we are just uh, putting in the line. We'll backfill and we'll get to work on the other parts that you'll see coming up shortly. But this is a central boiler 6048, uh, one of the last ones before the EPA forced our hand, forced the, everybody to change to a gas fire. Okay, the next step is we're in a mechanical room and we used an existing hole. Thankfully, there was already one here for a dryer they were going to do, but they changed their mind, so we stole the hole. And we put a thermostatic valve in, which saves the boiler. And uh, then we run down to two, two manifolds. This is all inch and a quarter PEX coming in. And you see a series of valves. This is the return side on the left and the supply on the right. And we'll have the ability to run the two air handlers that are here. There will be two radiators cut in, two heat exchanger plates cut in to that. And then, uh, and then the third set will be for a plate heat exchanger that will go into their water, hot water system, which consists of a solar driven heat pump, a geospring, General Electric geospring. Then we're going to do a plate heat exchanger for the mixing valve. And then if there's nobody putting wood on a fire or if it's really bad weather, the propane in the third floor will finish it off. So we have three ways to heat water in series. So I'm not trying to complicate things, just trying to have backups to backups. All right, next step in the wood boiler install is pouring the concrete. We just finished it off. We just do a broom finish. For all you concrete experts out there, don't be laughing at my work. But this is about as best as I can do with a two by four and a broom. So she's done. Got our inch and a quarter lines in. We'll let this pad cure out for three days. And we'll go set the, the boiler on it in three days and hook up the pumps. We've got our electrical to finish, putting conduit. And then it's radiator work. So our critical loads panel is just about maxed out. I just added this wood boiler circuit to run the circulating pump to bring the hot water in to our manifold. And we've got radiators and heat, heat exchangers and valves to put in our two air handlers. That's next. Okay, picking up the next central boiler. This is one of the last uh, 6048 classics before they switched over to the gasification unit. So the gentleman was fortunate to get one of these, I think. I've run it mine for about 10 years now. So anyway, let's go put her in place. Okay, another central boiler has landed. Got her in place. We can run her off the solar system, which doesn't take much to run these. Just gotta, just gotta put wood in it. And uh, pardon the mud, just washing her down. We're, we're running an inch and a quarter pecs to the house. So a lot of BTUs for that baby and then the one return. Room for three other pumps, possible greenhouse in this location in the future. But for now, sorry about that. She's in, chimney's on, she's full. And let me shut that thing off. Ugh. She is full. It looks good. I want a different color here to kind of make it blend in with the surroundings. Goes good with the solar. I think it does. You might not like it, but uh, <laughs> central boiler. This is this is the last of the classics. Um, they're still making them, and the newer ones are fancy gasification units with all sorts of Wi-Fi connections. You can monitor your reaction burn chamber. You can plot charts and graphs. You can go nuts. You can have your solar online, your boiler online, your house online, your security. I know, too much technology. But we can also run it very simple too. So if you want high tech, we can deliver. If you want low tech, we can deliver that as well. All right, let's get these radiators cut in the plenums. All right, we're back in the mech room, trying to finish up this wood boiler project today, if possible. We got um, coils are going in. This is our first uh, coil. I think that's a was that a hundred thousand BTU? I don't remember the size of that one, 
Yeah, that's a hundred thousand BTU coil for the wood boiler there in this air handler, and then um, my buddy's working on a second one right now. Transitions from this air handler up to the coil. Um, oh, this one's going to bolt right to the coil. Oh, or, no, it's got a little. It's going to slide in. So he built a little shelf to slide the coil in, so it can slide it back out. When we did mine, we just kind of bolted it in. So we're going to set the coil in here, and then we're going to plumb it over to the PEX. But before we do that, we've got to put in our, our little three-way valves here, our Keiko three-ways. And um, we'll be sending a signal to them from the thermostat. There's a lot of relay work here, too. I want to show you some of that. Though he, though he might not let me show him his tricks. So... One of the things we like to do is not install a secondary thermostat for these systems because the homeowner gets confused and by letting them use one thermostat to control their units, whether it's on, this is electric, that one's propane, and now we're putting in two wood boiler coils. So they just set the temperature and go. And that's the way these will be wired up. Okay, we'll be back. And sometimes the coils don't fit um, the plenum, the air handler, quite right so you make a transition from uh, the bottom unit to the ductwork going to the house so this is and this actually slides out and slide her out, slide her in if you ever have any problems you can pop a new one in all right we're setting our transition in place I'm gonna be screwing it down to the air handler this is a transition isn't it yes <laughs> And we'll like two it. transitions. Two transitions. We got to, We had to come up and go meet the radiator and then step back down to the ductwork above it. So it'll be, uh, everything's flange, screwed, taped, and insulated. All right, for you uh, relay gurus uh, out there, this is uh, my, my buddy Cimarron's uh, handiwork here. He's got three relays in the system to allow... Um, when we want heat, the electric heat strips are cut, are, are relayed out, they're cut out of the system. And then we're also controlling this Taco two-way valve that, uh, that the relay basically, when it calls for heat, drives that um, switch up there, that valve up there, allowing the hot water to go into the coil and, and therefore the fan coming across the coil gives you your heat. And then there's an override when on the right, the relay, when AC is called for, it overrides everything and the valve is turned off so there's no hot water in the radiator, of course, and of course the heat um, strips can't run at that time when AC is called for. So I probably explained that uh, wrong. And then the other cool thing we've got on here is a Honeywell um, with a thermocouple reading. So if they get lazy and don't put wood on the boiler, um, this thing goes back to operating like it did before we showed up and tore up everything. So it goes back into regular heat pump mode. So that's an electric heat pump system. And this is a propane unit. We've got to do a similar thing. I think it's a little bit easier on the propane unit, but it's still... Uh... Anyway, while I've been working on plumbing, he's been working on the, on the relay. And I should have been watching him because he did an awesome job. And this thing, one's done. It's just got to be insulated. But this, again, you got to do all this. You don't have to do all this. This makes it pretty full, foolproof for the homeowner just to set the thermostat at the temperature they desire. Okay, we've, we're kind of labeled in there. On the left is the two-way two valve and the fan. And then in the middle, the relay is labeled as electric heat strips. Relay on the right is for the AC. And then it's brown open, and that's the wire. Excuse me here. Um, the brown wire is what's driving that Taco valve open. Again, those are spring-loaded valves, and it pushes, um, solenoid pushes that open, opens that so that the uh, hot water goes into your into your heat exchanger or radiator or coil or whatever we're calling it. I've called it five different things on the video, so pardon me. But if you don't think this is cool, then I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> All right, it's a long day. We're buttoning it up. We got everything done. The relays have tested out. The house is at 86 degrees. That's success. And our Honeywell relays are working. Now I got to do some insulating, so don't laugh at my spaghetti plumbing. 
Um, it took almost all day to get the air out of the system, which has been ridiculous, but we are finally making hot water and heating the house, and it's at 86 degrees, and it's a very large house. So, and it was, and it's fairly cold out. So, all right, if you have any questions and you want one of these, don't ask me. <laughs> I always keep saying I'm never going to install another wood boiler because there's so many variables and so much to do. But here I am again. Just got to do a little buttoning up in terms of cleaning up and making things look a little nicer. But functioning wise, she's doing awesome. And I'm out of here. You got any questions about wood boilers? I still really like them. There's just a lot of work. But, and the work that was done here allows these folks to not have to really know how it works. It just works. And air conditioning, heat strips, propane, heat pumps, we've covered all the bases here. This relay box only has two relays in it because we don't have to worry about the heat strips. And this one has three relays in it because we want to cut out the heat strips when the wood boiler is an operation. So this is probably the most complicated boiler system we've done so far but it's also very simplified for the homeowner. So Simran did a great job getting these transitions in and making it look decent and awesome. Couldn't have done it without him. All right, we are finally done with this. We had a little bit of trouble bleeding the air out of the system, but now we've got everything is super, super hot. You can't hold your hands on these. So all of our zones, all of our loops are working great. We're able to run them out of the house. We had them at 90 degrees in the house. That's always fun. And then, uh, so we've got two, two, our two air handlers are working great, and our hot water loop, which is finally. So we had about 500 feet of PEX lines to get the air out, and sometimes it's just, you just gotta fight it. Zoning valves and uh, radiators are in, everything's working good. We definitely improved this time with a much nicer uh, controls with the two relays on the propane, three relays on the heat pump, and so it doesn't matter what they do, it's going to be automatic. And if the wood boiler is off, it doesn't matter either. So I think the three re relays in here cover every combination of heating, air conditioning, electric strips, and the relay when they're not putting wood on the fire. So we're good. All right, so the heating side of the house is doing awesome. Let's go see the, let's go look at the uh, hot water side of the house. Okay, our solar system's still doing great. Come here, let's show you our water system. This is different, um, but we are taking any waste heat off of the electronics, turning it into hot water. This is our first line of water heating, and we feed the plate heat exchanger from the wood boiler. This is at about 180 degrees right now. Mixing valve. I've got it cranked up. This is now the input to the propane water heater, and so we've got electric, wood and propane and um, you can run off of each one independently but all three are running right now meaning they're all on but what will happen is we want we will always want the solar to be working we always want this heat pump to be operating because it conditions this basement and, and other things and then it, it does provide a little bit of uh, we don't have to bring it up so hot um, with the plate heat exchanger we bring it up from about 130 degrees to 180 degrees and we mix it back down to 140. It's pretty hot, but by the time it gets to the propane heater into their house, they wanted hot water, and they've got seriously hot water. So, and if they and if they don't put wood on the boiler, the propane will kick in. But the first heating will always be solar uh, from the heat pump. So, it's the first time we've done with three heating sources in series. Um, I don't think we need to add any circulating pumps. I think the, the logic works out pretty pretty good. So, all right. Um, Phone's ringing, it's time to go to another job. All right, we're out here at the boiler. Um, boiler had shut itself down because there's not a lot of heat load. We're getting into springtime. But thankfully we had enough days of cool, wet and cool nights to test her out. She's doing, doing awesome. She's shut down. So one pump, one circulating pump is doing the whole house. Um, and it's a big house. It's probably 6,000 square feet at least. And uh, had all their hot water needs. We can also add a zone on, and we probably will for a greenhouse in the future. We're going to put a nice woodshed out here, gravel everything in, make it, make it neat. All right, she's full of water, full of the inhibitor that she gets, and uh, 
now they just we need to build a woodshed. It's one of those projects that never ends, but it's when it's done, um, I love it. I've run mine for 10 years. 